Hi, everybody. Let's talk Vanderpump Rules May the Best Woman Win. Not so bad of an episode. Let's talk about it. At the beginning of the episode, it opens up and they're kind of talking with Tom, the producers are, regarding the whole house situation, the ongoing Tom and Ariana house situation. And he's really upset about the dog comment that she made, that she paid for the dog so she gets the dog. And he's reiterating how much he paid for in the house, the batteries, the paper clips, the toilet paper, everything. I think he should just take the batteries, the paper cups, and the toilet paper and let her have the dog. I mean, we did see on the previous episode that she did buy the majority of the furniture, too. And there's documentation of that. So I think he might have a little distorted reality in terms of what he's contributed financially to. It seems like she may have done some of the larger expenses, i.e. $6,000 vet bill to take care of the dog that got sick due to Tom's negligence. And I know the furniture in their house was not cheap, so that was a pretty penny. He may have often bought a bunch of little stuff, but I don't know if it's gonna be equal. I do, however, when he mentioned batteries again, (laughs) and I started laughing out loud, I'm like, is he really bringing up batteries again? And sure enough, the producer says this, Anything the house needs from toilet paper to trash bags to pens to batteries to electrical work to repairs. There's pens in the drawer. There's batteries in the drawer because I do that. You just got destroyed on the internet for saying that. Why would you bring it up again? I think Ariana's going to be in for when she gets her own place. She's going to be in for like a very rude awakening. And he doubles down. No, he triples down. (laughs) He said it before. He's saying it again. And then the producer points out, you got a lot of slack for mentioning the battery thing. Why are you mentioning it again? And he triples down by saying, well, she doesn't pay for anything. Oh, it's going to be a shock to her when she gets her own house and what she has to buy. I honestly don't think it will be, quite frankly. The way it works in relationships is one person usually takes one responsibility and other people take other responsibilities. And she probably didn't care about batteries. (laughs) He did. So he made sure there were always batteries. We'll see how it all pans out in the end. He and Ariana are both bitter. So we go back to Beach Day where the last episode ended and Schwartz had taken Sandoval away from the beach scene because Ariana was really struggling with his presence there and getting more and more angry. So he takes him to a bar and Sandoval right away just walks up to a random group of girls at a table and introduces himself, asks what their name is, and then asks the one girl, what round of drinks do you want for everybody here? And it just never comes off as genuine, you know? I don't know why it seems just disingenuous, but it does. He really has this side of him that It doesn't seem like altruistic giving. It seems like, well, the cameras are on now, so I'm going to buy a round of drink for these people. The cameras are on, so I'm going to help James do his proposal. It always seems to be, I want to show off my big heart. Counts for nothing if people are watching you. What counts is what you do in private when other people don't see. And that's what makes up the content of your character. So, in fact... It's actually almost worse. You can tell that he just wants to get the credit for it. And that maybe also there's a part of him that is void of love. I don't know his back history and his family history in that. But even when he had Ariana, he seemed to always be purchasing gifts for people all the time. Jax, James, whoever. Well, now Tori the nanny comes up to the table where Schwartz is sitting and she's talking to him. And Tori, the nanny-ish, she's actually a nanny for another family, but she's been filling in a lot for Sheena because Sheena and her have been friends for like a decade. So Sheena trusts her. I don't know how they met each other because she's at least a decade younger than Sheena. Mm, I don't know how that all worked out. I don't know if we ever got the deets on that, but... 
At any rate, Sheena thought that Tori would be a good match with Schwartz, so she introduced them the other night, and then she shared with Katie that she did this to keep everything on good, solid ground with her, and Katie's like, oh, I think I might be interested in her, so Sheena's like, I can't win, (laughs) but it's fine. So here's Tori going up and talking with Schwartz right now at the bar, and Then Katie comes in and Schwartz is like, thanks for killing my vibe. And Katie starts talking to Tori and Katie kind of mean girl (laughs) Schwartz out of there and is like, those girls are talking to you at that table. Go, go talk to them. You're being rude. So eventually Schwartz, as he normally does, tucks his tail between his legs and off he goes to the table of the other girls and he leaves Tori with Katie. Of which the two of them are talking about how they're both very attracted to each other and they're talking about their past relationships with females and that. And Tori pretty much hits on Katie. Katie's open to it. They start making out. The rest of the people in the bar are like, Katie admitted that she has slept with other women in the past, but she's never had a relationship with them. But she's open. Back at the beach, we have Ariana opening up to Lala and Sheena. They were kind of pushing Ariana to share what she's feeling, express what's going on between her and Tom, to let it out. I think it was a good little powwow session between the three of them because Ariana cried. She broke down. She needs to do that. She needs to start letting it out and not have all this anger and resentment built up inside of her that she's had for the past couple of months. And she has to get out of that house with Sandoval. She's been dragging her feet. She could have been out of there a long time ago. Later on in the episode, it does come up that she shared that she wasn't going to go to an apartment because that was such a downgrade from this big, beautiful home that was her dream home and that she wasn't going to leave it for an apartment. To her, it just felt like she lost and it's sad and she wanted, I don't know what she wanted. I don't, I mean, I guess she wanted the house. This is the house that your boyfriend of 10 years slept with his mistress for seven months under your nose, sometimes down the hall in another bedroom while you were still home. In that house, slept with somebody while you were at your grandmother's funeral. Why do you want to keep that house? The memories are horrible. Cut and run. Find a better house. Find a better location. That one's on a busy street. Go, Ariana, go. This review is going to be short. I apologize. I'm going to be out of town for five days, so I'm trying to get all of this done. I'll have to be doing the editing on the road, but I need to get it at least recorded before I go. We now have Joe and Lala going out for hot dogs. And apparently Joe contacted Lala and said that she wanted to talk to her. Lala asked her why when they got together, and Joe shared that Schwartz said to her that Lala would be a good person to just kind of befriend, and also kind of, I don't, she didn't come out and say this to Lala, but she said it in her interview that she wants to get in good with the group, and nobody likes her, and Lala would be that way to get in. Um, But she did must have said something to the effect of that because Lala admitted later on to Katie that one of the reasons that she was contacted was because she's in a soft spot right now and, and she's not that argumentative and she's more open, which she is most of the time. I found it interesting, though, that she said, Joe said in her interview I want to be part of the group, and if I want to be part of the group and get in with these girls, and I want to be part of Schwartz's life forever, Lala is her ticket in. Be part of Schwartz's life forever. She is definitely indicating a lot more feelings than Schwartz seems to feel about her. We'll talk more about that in a minute. This is the part that I didn't really like. Liar. So Lala asks Joe, she's like, here's the problem. Like, just share with me. Like, did you know about the affair? And she says no. Okay, let's just backtrack. Last year, Sandoval and Raquel went to Big Bear with Schwartz and Joe, the four of them, for the weekend, together. So Joe obviously was staying with Schwartz because she was dating him at the time. That was during their whirlwind romance. And she knew Tom Sandoval is sleeping in a room with Raquel. She claims, I was so tunnel vision into Schwartz, 
I didn't even notice anything going on with Sandoval. Lies. The lies. Unless you're a complete idiot, you put two and two together and realize the two of them are together. And to prove it was a lie, later on in her interview, she shares that she just assumed that Sandoval was broken up from Ariana. She's not really following it or knows what's going on with them. I don't know. That doesn't jive with, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know anything about them sleeping together. Oh, but I just assumed that they were broken up. Oh, so you did know then that Sandoval was hooking up with Raquel because you assumed that he had broken up with Ariana. Why else would you assume that he broke up with Ariana? Except that you saw him sleeping with somebody else. So you just lied to Lala. Just saying. Not going to get very far in this group if you start on a foundation of lies. That's my advice to you, Joe. I mean, come on. She never once asked Sandoval, hey, by the way, where's your girlfriend of 10 years that you own a house with? You just accepted the fact he was there with another chick. I mean, <laughs> come on. And she didn't think that answer through, I don't think. Later on, we go to Top Golf with James, Lala, Katie, and Allie. Everyone was ribbing and teasing Katie a little bit about the night before and the kiss that she had in the bar. And Katie just said that she enjoyed it. Everyone was kind of like, oh, really? Well, and she goes, well, but, you know, she is now going out tonight with Tom Schwartz, <laughs> her ex-husband. <laughs> Oh goodness, what a mess. I think there is a very good chance that Katie sees this as a competition. The fact that she slept with Tom's best friend just recently and now knows that Sheena was trying to hook up Tori with Tom. She decides to come in and maybe try to pull Tori away from Tom just to prove that she's got it too or to keep people away from Tom. I don't know. It's so confusing because Katie really gets upset when Tom moves on or Tom has another relationship or Tom is interested in somebody. So I think Katie still has feelings for Tom. She just decided to move on because he was too childish. I mean, he's always been childish and you chose to marry him. So really that's your own fault, Katie. He didn't turn childish after you got married. <laughs> he may have actually grown up a little bit at that point. He's always been a child. We do have a scene with Lala and uh, Sheena accompanying her to a fertil fertility clinic, excuse me. And Lala basically states that she wants to move forward. She wants to have a second child and she wants to go the route of a fertility clinic because no strings attached. This child is hers. No guy's ever going to come and try to claim time. I guess, I don't know, a psychologist could really break this down. Pop Psych could do a good job on this. I, I don't know if she's trying too hard to fill the void. I mean, is this going to, it almost feels like this will be the special child that's with her all the time and the other one has to always go to dad's house. Like, that's not a great arrangement either. Not that she should find somebody who she has to have a child go away from, but I don't know. Like, her rationale wasn't just pure, I just have all this love to give and I'm ready to move on and I'm not with somebody right now, so I'm going to a fertility clinic. It's it's more about the possession of she's all mine and nobody will ever be able to take her from me. So I think a psych could have a heyday with that philosophy, but I can't, not my degree, so I'm going to move on. We go to a hair salon where Joe is coloring Tom's hair bleach blonde. It really didn't turn out that great. I mean, not that I thought he would look good in bleach blonde. And it's not that she necessarily did a bad job. It's just I, he looks good as a brunette. So as she's coloring his hair, he's talking about his date with Tori. And that she seems very aggressive. She's like, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She doesn't pause. Even when she's surprised when he said, oh, but Tori's going to go on a date with Katie tonight. She's like, she's what? She's dating Katie tonight, huh? I mean, there's not even like a, oh, really? Tell me about that very aggressive in her coloring and just bah, 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 not taking a breath or a pause. She's really intense. I don't think I could be around her for very long. And I know she said that she feels bad. Somebody called her crackhead because of the way she reacts and all that. And she's like, that's not fair for people who have ADHD. It's more than ADHD. <laughs> I was a speech therapist. I worked with special needs kids for many years, and I've seen my share of ADHD kids, and 
there's something else going on with Joe besides just ADHD. She is all over the place, all over the place. Or maybe her meds are amping her up instead of bringing her down. I don't know. But if that's her on medication, I can't even imagine. It's just too frenetic of an energy that I couldn't be around it for very long. Works for Schwartz, though. They may end up being the perfect match. So at this point, Joe expresses it. She's not really happy that Tori, Sheena's friend, is the one that's dating him. And so technically she's in the friend group, yet everyone's giving her a hard time because she was in the friend group and dating Schwartz. Mm, Not comparable. Not comparable because you were going on trips with Tom Sandoval and Raquel while Ariana had no idea what was going on. That's why everyone's really mad at her. Not just for the fact she's dating Schwartz. It's the history of the relationship going on during the time the affair was going on and her not sharing it with anybody. Now, I don't know how close she was with anybody, but if she considers herself in the group, which I guess she does, she should have spoken up or forced Schwartz to speak up. Anywho, very different from this outlier Tory girl who nobody has seen on any episode and who looks like she's 15 years younger than everybody. She just looks like a child. She's not part of the group. They're all at a different stage in their life. She looks like she's graduated from high school. Oh, and to prove that, I have that here in my notes. So I don't know if this was a flashback. Probably was. It was probably a flashback to when Tori went out on a date with Katie and they went to a painting place and apparently... Tori had no idea who Bob Ross was. I mean, Bob Ross is before my time too, I think. But he's been on PBS ever since my 20-year-old kids, 20-something-year-old kids, 26 years old, they were young. They watched it on PBS. So she must be younger than that to not have any idea who Bob Ross is. And he had a resurgence in the past decade where all kinds of young kids were going as Bob Ross for Halloween. And I I don't really understand her not understanding that, but we'll let it go. So that evening, we have a bunch of the girls. I was like Lala and Katie, Sheena and Ariana, I believe, uh, walking in to go to a bar. And I am so, can I just say, side note, so over the slow motion walking scenes with the music leading up to it where the girls are like. As they're walking down the street to go to a bar every single time. It feels so dated. Like, uh, are done. Vanderpump rules. Come on, Bravo. Be better. Come up with something unique and interesting. Like, it's just like, uh, it's bad enough. We have another scene in another bar where everyone's just sitting around talking. But now we have to have the 30 seconds of watching them walk in. Zero for originality. Okay, so they're all in the bar and they're having a good time. Katie's laughing. She's sharing about her kiss and her date that she had with Tori. Katie also shares, um, she's self-deprecating, which was nice. She was in a good mood. She was smiling. She shares that tequila Katie is dangerous. So she might go out with girls. She might go out with guys. You just never know. Tequila Katie is unpredictable. This is so true. And then somebody brings up to Lala, or did Lala volunteer it? I can't remember, but the situation comes up that Lala went with Joe um, to have a hot dog. And Katie goes off the handle. Katie cannot handle it. She cannot understand it. She thinks that Lala's a traitor and that she's a hypocrite and she just doesn't understand. This is like the same. She's very much, I am. I won't compare her to Sister Wise because y'all probably don't watch it, but it's a very Robin Brown thing to say. I just don't understand why you would do that. And Lala's like, why would I not? She called me up and we ate a hot dog together. Katie was acting like the two of them are now best friends. They're not. They each had a hot dog. (sighs) Meanwhile, the guys are out with Joe 
to the singles night event. So they're going around and they're mingling, sort of. Well, before it even happens, you get a wristband. The green color means I'm single. Go ahead, hit on me. And then there's a color that means I'm the wingman for somebody else. And there's another per color that means I'm taken, but I'm open. Everybody in the group gets green wristbands. All the guys, Schwartz, Sandoval, random guys I don't know, and Joe. Green wristbands. They're all single. And yet, Joe's following Schwartz around the bar, wherever he goes, whenever he's talking to somebody, and she kind of inserts herself into the conversations that he's having. And then at one point, one girl wants to make out with Schwartz and kind of dares him to, so they have a little bit of a kiss. Joe, not so happy, walks up to Schwartz and says, all right, I'm out of here, peace, I'm going. And she leaves, and she's muttering to herself as she's leaving, I can't believe this, I hate him, blah, 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 as she's taking off and leaving clearly demonstrating this is where Schwartz is. I'm at singles night and trying to hook up with somebody. And she is following him around like a puppy dog. And when she sees him interact with somebody, can't handle it, removes herself from the bar. In her interview, Talking Head, she shares that she thought they were all going to the bar to just support Sandoval in finding somebody. She didn't know that anyone else was going to look for somebody. And yet, when they were coming up with colored wristbands, she didn't say, uh, I don't feel like getting hit on by anybody tonight. Just give me a support band and I'll be the wing woman for any of the guys here. She didn't say anything. She took a green band too. So you don't speak up. That's what happens. She does share in her interview that her and Schwartz are still continuing to hook up and that they say, I love you to each other. And that might be true because later on, Schwartz does admit he has a lot of feelings for her. And she's like, she's his best friend right now. And they share everything with each other. But he just wants friends with benefits. He doesn't want a commitment. And he said at that point too, I mean, it could be love that I'm feeling. I have love for her. But it may not be that he's in love with her. He just has a love for her. Like he doesn't want her to not be in his life, but he doesn't want to commit to her. I mean, he's a child. He hasn't grown up. We've established that already. And shockingly, Joe is more grown up than he is, and she does want a relationship with him, so they're not on the same page. Sandoval did notice that when they first got to Singles Night. He was very much aware that Joe and Schwartz don't seem to be communicating about where they are in their relationship and that Joe wants a lot more than Schwartz does. There's a paintball scene. Absolutely nothing worth talking about that came out of that. Let me just say, Brock, I'll just say the guys all showed up in camo or long pants, the appropriate attire for paintball. Sandoval had his own costume outfit that he bought that is his paintball outfit. And Brock showed up in like Hawaiian bathing suit looking shorts. <laughs> Stuck out like a sore thumb. He goes, oh, I'm underdressed. I'm like, not underdressed, just inappropriately dressed. <laughs> it was bad. Nothing else to say about that whole scene. We go back later on that day to Schwartz's apartment. Schwartz enters the apartment. Joe's already in there. Clearly, she's living with him. This is messy. Schwartz says, I feel like I might be giving you mixed signals. Mm-hmm. It's good that he's picking up on it now. And he does directly come right out and say to Joe, I don't want to be in a relationship at all. He said, maybe I need to step away a little bit if you're in a different spot. And she says, maybe we should step away altogether. And he's like, yeah, well, maybe, maybe that's what we should do. But then in his interview, he goes, oh, I'd be devastated if she did that. She's such a big part of my life. She's my confidant. We share everything with each other. We just, we're each other's emotional support. We're everything to each other. I'd be devastated if she left my life. But yet when she proposed it to him, he goes, yeah, maybe that's what we should do. Yeah, that's good. I mean, the communication is ridiculous, ridiculous. In fact, he even used the word tragedy. It would be a tragedy if she wasn't in his life anymore. I don't know. Maybe he has deeper feelings for her. She did feel like he has deeper feelings for her, but he won't admit it in front of the group because he's embarrassed of her and embarrassed that he's in this relationship with her. 
she might be on to something. I don't know. He's never admitted that at all. He's more than happy to let people know that they hang out and that they're friends. So I don't know. He does seem to always want to please Katie, though, and he knows Katie hates her, so it could be that. I don't think he cares about the rest of the group, but I think he does care what Katie thinks. So they're talking about this a little bit more. In the end, Joe does admit to him. Joe admits to him, I think I have deeper feelings for you than I realized, and I could see us growing old together getting old and ugly and just laughing on a front porch. And Schwartz is like, yeah, I can see that too, totally. (laughs) Mixed signals. Just stop, Schwartz. Don't say you don't want to be in a relationship with her and then agree that you see yourself committed to her down the road long term and that you're going to be growing old together. Like, it's confusing to a girl. So at the end of the conversation, Joe realizes that she needs to go. She's crying. Schwartz is feeling bad. And then she gets up and goes, I have to call my dad. And she just leaves the apartment and walks out. And there's no like really closure to the conversation. They didn't like end it on a, okay, so this is what we're going to do. There wasn't like a mature understanding or real discussion or conclusion at all. She just got up and said she had to call daddy. <sighs> Red flags on Joe. I think Joe has a difficult time handling life. I can see that she thought she was in a relationship with him and it doesn't seem to be working out, although he still wants to be with her and he's conflicted and it's not like he full on was mean or committed to her and then cheated on her behind her back. Everything was open in communication between the two of them. They both knew what the other ones were doing And yet her reaction is, I need to call my dad. As opposed to, I just need some time alone. I need to go for a walk. I need to gather my thoughts. It was, no, I need to talk to daddy and and have this work through. And that really bothered me. Because I'm like, how old are you? I don't know. She seems very fragile. Very fragile. And we saw that when the girls talk about her. She just really gets extremely neurotic and always has to leave places she never deals with any situations when anything is uncomfortable she picks up and she walks away and she leaves I don't think that's gonna work out well for Schwartz he needs I don't know what he needs (laughs) I guess Katie was more mature I mean she's like boring she's like an old lady mature and I think that was too much for him he needed somebody who was more fun now he found fun Joe's fun she's a good time But I think she's only a good time. And I think he needs some stability in his life. And she doesn't seem to be the picture of stability to me. I might be wrong. We'll see what happens in the future. But that was the end of our episode. So short and sweet review, but not a bad episode. That's some good stuff happening in there. We have Katie and Schwartz dating the same girl. That's good. We have Joe finally admitting that she's in love with Schwartz and Schwartz kind of denying that he's in love with her although he hasn't come out and said that and it looks like ariana might be taking steps to move on so all in all okay some really boring scenes in it but all in all okay i feel like i'm doing these reviews and sharing with the producers and the editors who are doing it (laughs) like i'm in a focus group and i'm giving my opinion and they're gonna make changes based on what i say (laughs) they're never gonna know what i'm saying here I guess it just makes me feel good to say it. All right, that's all we have. Take care. Hopefully I will get this edited and up before Tuesday night when the next episode premieres since I am busy all the way through 10 p.m. Monday night. And this is just Wednesday evening. See you soon. Bye, everybody.